my lab has been studying uh, immunity in older adults and why and how immunity wanes when we get older. And so when there is a virus like this that uh, makes older adults particularly sick and, and dying from this disease, that was a logical thing to start you know, doing research on. So, you know, we wanted to do this and it was like, yeah, we'll, we'll need an antibody test. Let's put together an antibody test. And then we were going, well, yeah, you know, while we have it, might as well test people in our labs, you know, and maybe we will test people in our department. And then the next, next we know we're supposed to test our entire university. And next we know there's, um, you know, the state gets interested and we're doing, uh, you know, all of the healthcare uh, providers and, and uh, frontline workers. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a bit of a scale up. <laughs> Why was it important for the university to develop its own form of testing for this coronavirus? Was it, was it just a matter of we need to do something and we, we've got the ability to do so? In part. I mean, in other parts, it was more like, you know, what, what we realized was not happening, you know, elsewhere. It wasn't like that, um, you know, we were ready nationally and had the program to roll out, you know, one test or two tests or maybe three tests that are going to cover the whole nation or anything like that. It was this type of, of um, you know, it wasn't really clear who's gonna do what. A lot of it was like the states are left to do what they're supposed to do or whatever they can do. And, uh, you know, we were looking around uh, a lot of companies that were doing this early on, we felt were not really all that much better than, than we were and what we could do when we knew what kind of stringency we wanted to put on. So. You know, we kind of like jumped and, you know, took a deep breath and jumped and, and, uh, and uh, you know, we developed the test. And so we're, we're where we are now. So you mentioned that this test, it measures exposure and immunity, uh, which I think is, is kind of at the heart of one of the biggest questions, which is when, when people who have been infected, will they be immune to the virus moving forward? Or how long will they be immune to the virus moving forward? At this point, do you have a sense of that timeline? If someone's had COVID-19, do you have any idea if, if, if and when they could get it so, again? Yeah, there's, there's this uh, has, has taken over, um, you know, people's judgment, I think, quite a bit. And, you know, there's a lot of discourse about it that reminds me, it's almost, a, you know, we're, this is not a bubonic plague in the Middle Ages. We actually know something about these viruses. We know a fair amount about these viruses. This particular one, of course, you know, has changed, has mutated, has become a whole lot more contagious. It spreads great, you know, with great efficacy between humans. Um, it is deadly to, to, to a portion of the population. So all of that is causing fear. But, you know, uh, we know it's two nearest cousins that are pathogenic, and, and those are SARS-1 and MERS. And those are the templates and those are the ones that we should take into account when we're talking about it. Which, you know, this is not like a virus that has mutated into a meteorite coming you know, toward. It's not like a dinosaur that has risen from the dead. It's really something that, you know, as I said, we know a lot about it. So to your first question, will most people have immunity against this virus after they had the infection? My unqualified answer is yes. There is no doubt that we will not have immunity to this virus. And how long will that immunity last is another question. So this virus will not make us rewrite, you know, immunology and virology textbooks. It will behave predictably. And of course, you know, the, what, what we're facing right now is we don't have therapies, we don't have a vaccine, and it is attacking a huge number of people and it will leave a huge number of people dead and, and, and very sick. And so that is, the, that is what, we, what we're facing. But we have, you know, we have elements to make decisions and to figure out how to go forward. You know, I just wonder what, what needs to happen. Like, do, do you think that that's a reality that we could actually have students back on campus in the fall? I think, I think it's, it's not unrealistic, but, you know, thinking through carefully how is this going to all look is super important. And, uh, you know, the, the, we, we, Every day, as I said, we have different discussions about this. And you know, today I spoke to our colleagues in Oklahoma who are thinking about some of these things also. Um, you know, there would be ways of, uh, first of all, some you know, social distancing and personal protection is if we, if, if it, if we open in, in August, that's gonna have to be a, a way of life. It will be a way of life until the vaccine's around and until it's protecting most people. 
So, you know, class sizes are probably going to be less and, uh, you know, there's going to be space between students <laughs> in every direction and there's going to have to be controlled testing in, you know, you have a large dorm, for instance, um, you'll have to test at least weekly, if not twice a weekly, small number of people, perhaps. I mean, there's, you know, there's a, I, I, I hate to use, you know, animal analogies, but that is where, where we know a lot where you can actually, you know, test sentinels. So in a way, we would pick sentinels and figure out, you know, are we sensing a rise of infection in a particular group? Do we need to then break up this group and isolate it more vigorously into, into smaller groups? And who amongst that group, you know, is likely to have immunity, which is where the antibody test should help. It's always a matter of, you know, how compliant can we be and under which circumstances, and that's always in you know universally proportionate to the fear that we feel um but you know if we can get that that consistent messaging you know in any group of people and hopefully we can get it nationally of you know be be um careful for yourself and be considerate of others and protect yourself and protect others then i think that a lot of things will be possible as as, as we march to you know through the next year and towards that vaccine